Hello there. We're here for another training with Justin, and we're going to teach Justin how to get into a horse trailer today. This can be quite a challenge for many horse people, so there are some easy techniques to make it easier. So what I like to do is walk them up to the trailer. Now I have an old school straight load step up trailer. That just happens to be my preference. I like these. This one's worn out, but uh, nice and safe and does a good job for me. So what I'm going to do is ask him to come all the way up to the opening of the trailer. And if he resists me at all, uh, we're going to remember that we yield to the pressure of the chain and we drop our head and submiss. Having a horse knowing how to submiss to a chain is uh, invaluable in getting them to load into a trailer, walk across a creek, yeah. step onto a bridge. When they don't want to do it, they resist in your neck so you get the submission in the neck as well by dropping the head they can uh, sniff the object a trailer a creek a, a bridge and when they drop their head down they actually relax so if they're getting keyed up you drop their head down get them to look at the object that's scary and it gives them a chance to relax so I'm going to ask him to come up to the step up here and we'll see how close he gets Good boy. Now what I've done with this trailer is I've opened up my center divider so that I can swing it over and I have to hold it. It's not staying stable. I'm a little on a hill here. And I go ahead and come in with him because I have room with this open divider. So right now he's not resisting. It can be easier training a horse to load in a trailer with two people as long as both people know what they're doing. The biggest secret is when you ask them to move forward, you reward them for that. Many people, when the horse moves forward, they start trying to rush them or push them and keep them going or speed them up. That's actually a negative reinforcement for doing what they were asked to do, which was to come forward. With doing it by myself, I've done one time already. It did take me 30 minutes to get him to step in the first time. And if he comes forward, he gets reinforced. If he goes backwards, that's when he gets negative reinforcement. And if he stops moving and refuses to come in, well, there you go, second time around. So we've got the front feet and not the back feet. I'll let him stand there for just a moment because that was spectacularly fabulous. Now, if he goes backwards right now, he's going to get negative reinforcement. Uh -uh -uh. I don't want him to go backwards, good boy. If he comes forward, he gets positive reinforcement. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and ask him, come on up, uh-uh. Good boy. So as long as he's moving forward, I stop pulling, I stop pushing, I stop asking. If I ask him to move forward and he moves one inch forward, he's rewarded for that. As long as he's coming forward, I leave him alone. If he goes to go backwards, he's going to get contact on the chain. He's going to get told, uh, 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 uh. I have to do that quietly. He's trained that and he's doing fabulous. So right now he's hooked to the stud chain and you never ever ever want to put a stud chain on a horse in a trailer but I used it in case he wanted to back out. So I'm going to unhook from his stud chain and hook to his halter so that I can come around front and tie him on the inside. Right now I have the center divider open so I have to see if I can close it without him flying out. Now, he's not tied in the front at all right now because you do not ever tie the front until you've already secured the back. The last thing you want is a horse pulling back in a trailer. Not what you want. So he's not tied right now. If he wants to fly out, he can. I'm securing the center divider, and now I will put the butt chain on him. Since he's so small, once I get that butt chain on, I kind of want to hurry and shut the middle door here because he could come out under that butt chain if he really tried to. And now he's secured in there. I could shut the bottom door, but he's good to go. So I think we'll walk around over here and give him a little look inside the window. So again, this is his second time of getting in and the first time it took us 30 minutes. 
Once I got him in, I fed him dinner and let him hang out in here for an entire hour. And he did really well. The stud chain is still on him right now, but it is not connected. The lead rope is connected to the halter. I haven't actually tied him because I don't think I'm gonna need to. If I were about to tie him, I'm gonna take the stud chain completely off and I'm gonna tie him with only about 12 to 14 inches of rope. The saying of give them enough rope and they will hang themselves is applying to horses. That's where that came from. So never tie a horse in a trailer unless the butt is secured first. When it's time to get the horse out, undo the face and the last thing you do is the butt so that when they come out with, when you open that butt, nothing is tied here for them to pull back. So little wild horse, three years old, second time of loading into the trailer and there you go. We did spend that first half hour and hung out for an hour that last time. Okay, thanks so much. Good boy, Justin. Good boy, Justin. <laughs> Is that good food? Yummy, yummy, yummy. Okay. So now Justin's hung out in here for a moment and eaten some food. So we're going to see how he backs out. When I practiced the first time, we backed in and out a few times. He did really well. I want him to back out slowly and calmly. Again, we do not open this until his face is untied. So currently his face is not secured in there, which means I can open this up. And then I've got the chain and you always want to make sure that you're not in the way if he were to come flying out. So you want to get out of his way. So I'm going to step up in here and ask him to back up and we'll see if he goes nice and slow for me. You want to back Justin? We're going to ask him to back out slowly so he doesn't feel rushed. He stopped right there and that's good. I would much rather he stops than rushes out. I want him to come in calmly and go out calmly. Okay, I'm going to ask him to back nicely. Back, back, one step. Good boy. And I love that he halted there and I kind of asked him to because I didn't ask him to keep going. That's good. He should be able to stop one step at a time each time he's going in or out. See if we can get one more hoof. Back, back. Good boy. And he stopped there because I stopped, I stopped asking for a back. I'm cutting his neck. There's no pressure on his rope. Now I'm going to ask for the front end. Again, being cautious, if he were to fly, I have to be careful I don't get hurt with this rope. Back. And we want to keep his head straight. He turned to look at me. Back. Good boy. Back. And he can hoe right there because, again, we don't want to rush out. I love that he hoed there. I have to be honest, I did practice this our first time, but we literally only practiced it once, and then he did it. Now, one thing that we didn't have happen, he went in so nicely today. What I'd like to say is, again, if they're doing pause, if they're coming forward, you leave them alone and praise them. If they're trying to go backwards, you discipline them. If they're standing still and just don't want to get in, you can back them up and turn around and come at it again. You're, it's not a loss if you are the person who chooses to back up and turn around. If they choose to back up and turn around, you just lost and they won. But if you ask them to, so if I ask him to back up and then I ask him to turn around, he should be able to walk right back into that trailer for me. Now I'm going to try something here. I've walked in with him every time. Let's see if I have any chance of getting him to walk in without me. Probably not. He's not even real used to me putting the rope over his neck, but let's see. So if he comes forward, he gets reinforced for that. Good boy. Oh my gosh, is that horse not a star or what? Third time loading and I just let him go and he is in. That is one good little horse. If you ever want a nice little wild horse to start from scratch, get yourself an Oak Creek wild horse. They rock. I'm Shelly Black and I've been in the pet industry and the holistic health industry for nearly all my life. And I've created the new revolutionary solution for safely protecting your pets from ticks. Ticks Off is immediately effective at deflecting ticks for up to at least one week. And it works to deflect bot fly eggs too. Our unique formula was specifically designed for dogs, horses, and all your pets. And here's the best part of all. It has no negative side effects and can safely and effectively be used in conjunction with any and all other pest prevention products. 
Tix Off is an all-natural coat conditioner that makes the coat too slick for ticks to stick. So not only will your pets be safely protected from ticks, but their coats will be healthier and sleeker than ever before. So get yours today.